Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to look at some very specific pathways of the sympathetic nervous system. And so overall, this is really just going to be a summary or overview of the sympathetic nervous system. Now, a couple of things, just as a quick reminder. Remember, the sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight. So these activities that are going to be induced by the sympathetic nervous system are going to be things associated with maybe exercise or a stress response. So if you imagine a giant wolf is running after you trying to kill you and you're running for your life, Okay, those are the kind of activities that are going to be induced by the sympathetic nervous system. And even in many cases, if you go out to the gym and run some laps on the track. And then also remember that the sympathetic nervous system is a two-neuron pathway. Okay, so the first neurons, which are called preganglionic neurons, these are going to originate in the spinal cord. And then the postganglionic neurons are going to originate further out in different places depending on which pathway we're talking about. So each one of these systems uh, is going to have preganglionic neurons and postganglionic neurons, and they synapse with each other at a particular point. Also remember those preganglionic neurons are going to originate in the thoracolumbar region of the spinal cord. So the highest one is going to be at T1, and the lowest is really all around L2. So T1 to L2. And, of course, we have uh, regions that the sympathetic nervous system travels to that are higher up than T1 or lower down than L2. And so the way that those neurons get there is they're going to enter structures and descend downward or ascend upward. Okay, so let's now dissect the four major components of the sympathetic nervous system here. The first region uh, consists of preganglionic neurons originating from the T1 to T4 region of the spinal cord. And these generally are going to be components that are destined to go to the head. Okay? And basically what these components do is they really jump on the arteries of the neck and they follow them to the effector structures that they innervate in the head. One of the arteries that they actually go next to is actually the internal carotid artery. And so sometimes when there's issues like an aneurysm of the internal carotid artery, one of the manifestations of that clinically is issues with the sympathetic nervous system on that side of the face. That's actually called Horner syndrome and we'll cover that in a separate video. So in green here, we see those preganglionic neurons. Okay, those are the ones that are ultimately going to control sympathetic functions in the head. You can see that they originate T1 down to T4. Now what you'll also notice is that those neurons, axons, extend out from the spinal cord and they enter a structure that exists bilaterally um, on either side of the spinal cord. So this rectangular structure right here, this is the sympathetic chain. And there are ganglia, of course, that make it up. Okay, so it's a chain of ganglia. So you see here the axons of those preganglionic neurons enter the sympathetic chain, but what's important to know about the sympathetic chain is it doesn't actually extend into the head. Okay, it actually terminates at some point near the neck. And so in order to get to the head, those neurons, those preganglionic neurons, are going to have to converge and ascend up. Okay, so notice they come in here, they converge, and they ascend up. And specifically, they're ascending into this structure right here, and this circle really is uh, the superior cervical ganglion. Superior cervical ganglion, sometimes abbreviated SCG. And you'll notice that the synapse occurs in the superior cervical ganglion. And so right here, at this point where my mouse is, you can see that those preganglionic neurons are going to synapse with the postganglionic neuron, again, within this superior cervical ganglion. And then that postganglionic neuron, or neurons, I should say, are going to ascend up to the head to go to the various structures that they innervate. For example, sweat glands. Or there are some uh, uh, nerve branches that go to the ciliary body within the eye. So there's a bunch of structures in there. The second pathway that we have goes into the thorax region. Now this is going to consist of preganglionic neurons originating from the spinal cord between the levels of T1 and T6. Now in general, these are going to sort of bifurcate into two separate pathways. One of these, as you can see right here, is going to go to the lungs and the esophagus. The other part of it forms what's called the cardiac plexus, and it would make sense, it goes to the heart. Let's look and see how that occurs. So over here, you can see in red the preganglionic neurons that are ultimately going to control functions in the thorax. 
from T1 down to T6. So notice this region extends a little bit further down than those going to the head. And you can follow those preganglionic neurons. Now, they're going to enter the sympathetic chain, but depending on which organs we're going to, those preganglionic neurons are gonna do different things. So let's first talk about what happens if we're, if we're looking at sympathetic neurons that control the lungs and esophagus. Well, actually, notice you have the postganglionic neurons of that system actually within the sympathetic chain. So if we're looking at the part of the sympathetic nervous system that controls the lungs and the esophagus, notice that that synapse between the red preganglionic neuron and this postganglionic neuron, those actually occur at the same level within the sympathetic chain. In other words, what we mean, let's take the T1 level, for example. Okay, uh, The T1 preganglionic neuron synapses with a postganglionic neuron roughly at the T1 level. And then that postganglionic neuron, its axons exit the sympathetic chain, and they sort of converge with all the other similar ones from T2 down to T6. Okay, So you can see all of those postganglionic neurons merge together and then run as really a single unit that has a couple of branches. Um, the one set of branches goes to the lungs, the other set goes to the esophagus. Okay, So notice there that this synapse occurs within the sympathetic chain at the same level. Alternatively, you can have some branches that come off of these postganglionic neurons, but instead of synapsing within the sympathetic chain, they actually ascend upwards also to the structure up here, which remember was that superior cervical ganglion. Okay, and so once they run up to the uh, superior cervical ganglion, they synapse with postganglionic neurons that all run together as the cardiac plexus. And then that goes and innervates the heart. And so for example, when your body's in a sympathetic response, it's actually the cardiac plexus that's going to elevate the heart rate. Of course, there are circulating factors in the blood that can do that as well. But the cardiac plexus will accelerate the heart rate and contractility also, the sympathetic nervous system in the lungs will actually cause a bronchodilation. So hopefully that makes sense. So that's the head and the thorax. Now we're going to start getting into the abdominal pelvic region. So in orange right here, we have the abdominal preganglionic neurons. And these are going to span a pretty large length. It's going to be T5 all the way down to L2. Okay, remember, there's actually 12 thoracic regions. So this is quite a, a large area. And in general, the way that this system is going to work is that none of the synapses are actually going to occur in the sympathetic chain. Rather, we have these uh, collateral ganglia that actually exist um, outside of the sympathetic chain. And this is actually where the synapses are going to occur. So keep in mind, this one up here is termed the celiac ganglion. And then this one down here is the superior mesenteric ganglion. So again, those preganglionic neurons are going to originate in the spinal cord at the levels of T5 down to L2. You can follow them in orange. Notice that those preganglionic neurons not only extend out of the spinal cord, but they actually move into the sympathetic chain and then go through the sympathetic chain and form two separate pathways. The one up here, this is a convergence of mostly the upper half of these preganglionic neurons. And notice that this cluster of preganglionic neurons goes into the celiac ganglion. And this is where the synapse occurs with the postganglionic neuron here in black. Okay? And so that postganglionic neuron then goes and is going to innervate structures within the abdomen. Now the celiac ganglion is mostly going to get uh, the upper half of these structures, okay, the ones that are more superior, but there is overlap. Also notice we have a second pathway down here, so mostly these lower preganglionic neurons are going to come together, converge, and run as a second pathway, and the synapse there occurs in the superior mesenteric ganglion. And that synapse is with the postganglionic neuron, which then runs also um, into the lower half of the abdomen. Okay? So collectively, uh, these postganglionic neurons coming from the celiac ganglion and superior mesenteric ganglion are going to control sympathetic functions of the spleen, the stomach, liver, kidney, and the proximal half of the colon or large intestine. Okay, So that's the abdominal part of the sympathetic nervous system. 
Now we have a pelvic part of the sympathetic nervous system, and we have two general structures here. We have an inferior mesenteric ganglion, uh, but the other one doesn't actually operate through a collateral ganglion. It actually operates also through the sympathetic chain, like we saw up here at the top. So let's talk about those. And the pelvic part is from T10 down to L2, so you can follow those here. So those preganglionic neurons, you can see, originate in the T10 to L2 region of the spinal cord, and those axons exit the spinal cord and they run into the sympathetic chain. Now depending on whether those preganglionic neurons are destined for the inferior mesenteric ganglion, or what we call the sacral splanchnic nerves, they're going to do different things. Let's talk about the first one here. So when we have the inferior mesenteric ganglion, those preganglionic neurons, when they enter the sympathetic chain, they're going to converge and actually move inferiorly. They're going to descend down the sympathetic chain. And at some level, they're going to exit the sympathetic chain. So this in purple, this is still the preganglionic neurons, but they're clustered together, and they run into this collateral ganglion called the inferior mesenteric ganglion. And that's where the synapse occurs with this postganglionic neuron and then it will run uh, to particular structures within the pelvic cavity. Um, mainly this one is going to get the descending colon, sigmoid colon, and the rectum. Now let's look at those that are destined for the sacral splanchnic nerves. Okay, So we've still got those preganglionic neurons from T10 to L2. They're going to exit the spinal cord, the axons that is, and then they're going to go into the sympathetic chain here, and they're also going to descend downward. However, they're going to descend even further. Okay, And these right here, these are really uh, clusters of cell bodies here um, that are in the sacral region of the sympathetic chain. Okay, um, And so these are sacral ganglion within the sympathetic chain. And this is where the synapse occurs. So rather than exiting the sympathetic chain, uh, the synapses here actually occur within the sympathetic chain, but after it descends quite a bit downwards into the sacral region of that sympathetic chain. And so then those postganglionic neurons then are going to exit the sympathetic chain, here in black, and they're going to converge and run together. And collectively they're called the sacral splanchnic nerves. And they're going to go and innervate particular structures, mainly in the pelvic region. And we're talking pelvic organs like the urinary bladder, the prostate in males, and then components of the external genitalia in both males and females. Okay, Now, in general, uh, the sacral splanchnic nerves right here, which are postganglionic, and then the postganglionic region coming off of the inferior mesenteric ganglion, these postganglionic neurons are going to run closely together. So the sacral splanchnic nerves and the postganglionic neurons coming from the inferior mesenteric ganglion they're going to run together in the lower abdomen and the pelvic regions, and they're going to run together as a plexus, which is termed the inferior hypogastric plexus. And so then they're going to go to particular organs, like we just mentioned, for controlling sympathetic function. So hopefully this video gave you a good overview of the sympathetic nervous system. There is one component that we did leave out. Um, it's a fifth component where sympathetic innervation goes to the skin. That's covered in a separate video, uh, but it is in this playlist. So make sure to check that out. And please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.